tonight on News 22. And I am so honored to represent this incredible district. Socho Torres Moss wins her race for Congress, a come from behind victory over Republican Yvette Harold. Reports indicate a well-known name may replace Jeff Sessions as Attorney General. And NMSU's men's basketball takes on the UTEP Miners tomorrow in the Battle of I-10. All that and more on News 22 Thursday. Serving Southern New Mexico, this is the award-winning KRWG-TV News 22, where news matters. Good evening, everyone. I'm Diana Castillo. And I'm Amanda Adame. The Catholic Diocese of Las Cruces has a new list of priests and others accused of sexually abusing minors. The diocese held a news conference late this afternoon. The list includes, includes 28 priests with accusations that extend far back as the 1960s and 70s, and some that stand as far back as the 1950s. You are seeing file video of St. Genevieve's Church, which is one in question. The diocese says 12 of the priests have died and four have been removed from priesthood. The diocesan administrator says he hopes that this will encourage people to come forward if they've been abused. NMSU Chief of Police has sent out an email informing students and faculty of another sexual assault that was reported on the NMSU campus in a dorm room. According to the email, this incident happened on October 6, unrelated to a separate incident previously reported on October 16th. A night of fun in a Southern California town turns to tragedy in a moment. A gunman opened fire killing 12 people, mostly college students, before turning the gun on himself. Mary Maloney reports. If you're hearing gunshots fired, one person advising there's a subject inside shooting. An all too familiar dispatch as police get word of another mass shooting, this time in Thousand Oaks, California. Four centuries, we got multiple people down. We need a lot of ambulance. Sheriff's investigators have identified the gunman. They say he was a former Marine and known to law enforcement. In April of this year, deputies were called to his house uh, for a subject disturbing. They called out our crisis intervention team, our mental health specialist who met with him, talked to him, and cleared him. The horror began around 11.20 p.m. when the gunman entered the borderline bar and grill. The country bar was hosting a college night and it was packed with students. So then our friends got the bar stools and they started slamming it against the window so we could get out. <laughs> Hours after the shooting, loved ones were desperate for answers. Some receiving the news no parent wants to hear. This is going to be an absolute heart-wrenching time for me and my family. At least a dozen people were killed, including Sheriff's Deputy Ron Hewless, who was one of the first to respond. Gave his all. As I told his wife, he died a hero because he went, he, he went in to save lives, to save other people. In honor of his sacrifice, a procession traveled with Hewless's body as he was taken from the hospital to the examiner's office. I'm Mary Maloney reporting. You know, Thursday, almost Friday, hopefully this weekend has some good temperatures. I hope so too, and Alyssa is next with your first look at weather. All right, let's take a look at our current conditions. So right now we are seeing clear skies with a temperature of 64 degrees, winds at 9 miles per hour, humidity at 23%, dew point at 35, and our barometer sits at 29.82 inches. Now taking a look at our high today, we saw 76 degrees, which is well above our average at 69 and our low of 43 degrees. Now let's take it back to the year 2005 when we saw a high of 82 degrees and in 2008 we saw a chilly 27 degrees. We didn't see any rain today, so our yearly rainfall sits at 7.22 inches. That's all the weather I have for right now. Back to the desk for more news. In the last 48 hours, we've seen two different winners for the House of Representatives in New Mexico's 2nd District. On election night, Republican Yvette Harrell claimed victory. But after Doña Ana County counted abs absentee ballots, Socho Torres Mall is the apparent winner. News 22, Javier Gutierrez has more with our continued election coverage. The votes have been counted and the voices of people in New Mexico's 2nd Congressional District have been heard. 
The Donia Anna County clerk stopped the counting of absentee ballots on election night because the counters were exhausted. When they finished on Wednesday, Torres Small had won with almost 51% of the vote. And I am so honored to represent this incredible district, this enormous district, this district with people from all walks of life. Yvette Harrell's campaign manager the says they're waiting for provisional expected. ballots to be counted. We We've reached out to them for more recent comment, but haven't heard back. Um, Deborah you. Holland won in Thank New Mexico's first much. district. She's one of the first two Native American women in Congress. But at the same time, you know, there are people across this country hurting that uh, we mm -hmm. need to make sure that, that they are the focus of our attention as well. Newly elected officials take office in January. For News 22, I'm Javier Gutierrez. Responding to President Trump's firing of Attorney General Jeff Sessions, Deborah Holland's main concern is that Robert Mueller be allowed to finish the investigation into Russian meddling in the 2016 presidential election. The investigation moves forward unencumbered, and so the Democrats can stop any, um, you know, any Republicans who are trying to, um, you know, bring that to an end. Election day is over, but we still have some races that have not yet been decided. Some of the most high-profile races still outstanding include a controversy-played governor's race in Georgia and Senate races in Arizona and Florida that are too close to call. Kelly Smoot has this report. On Tuesday, as you know, we earned a clear and convincing uh, victory at the ballot box. Republican Brian Kemp announcing Thursday that he is beginning the transition process to become the next governor of Georgia. Hey! That's despite the fact that his opponent, Democrat Stacey Abrams, has not yet conceded the race. Votes are still being counted, ladies and gentlemen, and the votes of all the voters of Georgia deserve to be counted. Abrams' campaign said both the voting and ballot counting processes have been mired in controversy and is pursuing legal action. All the votes haven't been counted. How can anybody claim a victory when there are enough votes that have not been counted that could cause a runoff here? And in the Florida Senate race, Republican Governor Rick Scott has a slight lead over Democrat oh. incumbent Senator Bill Nelson. But the vote is so close that Nelson has already asked for a recount. An automatic recount would be triggered if the final margin is less than a half of a percentage point. That initial vote count is not expected until Saturday afternoon. And in Arizona, votes are still being counted in the race to replace retiring Senator Jeff Flake. Locked in a tight race, it may be days before officials there can say whether Democrat Kirsten Sinema or Republican Martha McSally will become the state's first female senator. In Washington, I'm Kelly Smoot. President Trump is considering former Jer New Jersey Governor Chris Christie to replace Jeff Sessions as Attorney General. Trump fired Sessions on Wednesday without naming a replacement, and Matt Whitaker is serving as acting Attorney General. Sources also say Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi is under consideration. Neither Christie, Bondi, nor the White House have made a public comment. DACA recipients are still safe for now. A federal appeals court has upheld ruling to protect them. On Thursday, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals agreed with a lower court's running ruling preventing the Trump administration from ending DACA, the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. DACA protects young undocumented immigrants who came from the U.S. as children from deportation. Lawyers from the Trump administration have already asked for the Supreme Court to step in. Las Cruces police are investigating a shooting that sent a 24-year-old man to the hospital and left another in custody. Police were dispatched to the report of shots fired at the Kilby Motel. Officers found a 24-year-old man suffering from a gunshot wound. He is in critical but stable condition. Officers located the 46-year-old man believed responsible for the shooting in a nearby storage building. He was taken into custody and no charges have been filed at this time. Stay tuned, Alyssa. We'll be back with your national forecast. But first, California will not be traveling through time. More on that when News 22 continues. This month in Passport, your on-demand library of the best of PBS. 
Agnes' house of secrets ever be called her home? You would be signing his death warrant. Is that what you want? I'm going to be exploring using laser technology to reveal secrets of the ancient world in a whole new way. He said, welcome home. It was just a powerful moment. These and other shows are available with Passport. Become a member of this PBS station. Sign in and start streaming today. I want young adults to know that the world is a much bigger place than just the spot that they are occupying at this time. And PBS presents that in a very positive manner. I have left my PBS station a gift in my will. I want to be certain the programs presented by PBS are carried forward to future generations. Welcome back. You're watching News 22 Thursday, where news matters. The state of California asked voters about daylight saving time, and an overwhelming majority voted Tuesday to end the practice of adjusting time. But as Macy Jenkins reports, the process is not finished. This is Sacramento at 5 p.m. on November 7th, just days after turning back the clocks. It feels like you should be going to bed right now. It's all dark. But it could look like this year round if voters get their way. I hate daylight savings. It disrupts me every fall. I think it's terrible and it should be. No, I shouldn't say that. Well, 60 percent of voters agreed they want one time in California, no matter the season. I want it to be the way it was before we just changed it. But others say if it ain't broke, why fix it? Love the change. It makes spring that much better. But not so fast. CBS 13 political analyst Gary Dietrich says it's going to take more than one proposition to freeze the clocks in California. It's got to go through a process if if there are going to be any changes, it goes to the legislature. There, it needs a two-thirds vote, and then it needs federal approval. We have a long ways to go before you get to monkey around with your clocks anymore. And if it is approved, will we keep daylight saving time or keep standard time? Well, that's the whole debate. Which one is it going to be? I want daylight savings time 365. Lighter, later. I want it to be the time that the heavens tell us it is. Dietrich says it's another decision for lawmakers, a head-scratcher for even the governor. It's curious. It was curious. In Hawaii and Arizona, the time stays the same. Yay! You're, you guys are going to be normal like us. Debbie Austin lives in Waikiki. We don't have to worry about going backwards and forth. We're always the same. And Rakeem Jelani hopes the Golden State is next. Well, we should be number three. A political analyst says the proposition may not be a top priority for lawmakers once they're back at work. The legislature is back in session in January. Canadian researchers say the darker the coffee, the better it is for your brain. Researchers from the Campbell Brain Institute in Toronto tested Starbucks via instant light roast, dark roast, and caffeinated dark roast. They're looking for a compound known to supposedly prevent two proteins common in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. The researchers found dark roast coffee has the highest amount. They say that it would make best for the brain health, but coffee is not the suggested cure. Your body mass index could actually impact how long you live. A new report by scientists at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine linked a body mass index that's either too high or too low to a shorter lifespan. Louis Casares has more in today's Health Minute. You may already know that being overweight comes with a slew of health issues that can shorten lives. But new research shows that being underweight increases the risk of dying early, too. BMI, or body mass index, is one indicator doctors use to measure a person's health. BMI between 21 and 25 is linked to the lowest level of morbidity. Interestingly, people under the recommended BMI are at an increased risk for dementia, Alzheimer's, cardiovascular disease, and suicide. The study analyzed data from 3.6 million people and over 360,000 deaths. Obesity was shown to reduce lifespan by 4.2 years for men and 3.5 years for women. What's worse, if this trend continues, obesity will be the most common cause of cancer in women by the year 2043. That's according to the Cancer Research UK. To reduce your risk of developing any health condition, it's important to keep your body index in the healthy range. Do it by getting proper nutrition and incorporating exercise into your daily routine. For today's Health Minute, I'm Louis Casares. 
The weather has been on and off this week. I know it's hot one day, cold the next. I wonder if the rest of the country is facing what we are. Alyssa's next with the national forecast. So people in around the country are actually facing some snow. People in the Midwest are bundling up tonight. It was estimated that they saw an inch to an inch and a half of snow today. A wind advisory has been issued for Kansas and the Kansas City area. Majority of the state is under winter weather advisory and some temperatures could fall as low as the 20s starting tomorrow morning and drop even lower on Saturday. Kansas is also expecting winds at 20 miles per hour and gusts at 30. So it's going to be a cold weekend for the Midwest. So let's take a look at temperatures around the country. In Minneapolis, they're seeing 29 degrees, very chilly. 16 in Minot, International Falls at 22 degrees. And in Detroit, 42 degrees. Now let's take a look at my next map. The world took a look at precipitation around the country. So if you'll see that blue area there, that is snow. And that green area, that is rain. So they're seeing one to three inches around the Midwest. Let's take a look at my next map. Take a look at the cities that are facing this snow. So Kansas City, Salina, Lincoln, and Columbia, they're also facing some precipitation. Let's take a look at my next map where we'll take a look at the pressure system that's causing these low temperatures. So as you can see here, there's a low temperature system in Minnesota as well as one in Indiana. Now that's all the weather I have for right now. Stick around. I'll be back to talk to you about temperatures around our region. Fresh Air with Terry Gross, weekday mornings at 11 on 90.7 FM and streaming live on krwg.org. If you're looking for a great way to get organized, this is it. It has a desk caddy and this is a computer desk that's designed for tabletops. It can be hung on a wall and it's 100% recycled wood, so you just can't beat this project. Saturday morning at 8.30 on KRWG Public Media. Next time on A Chef's Life. Go. I'm not on the road anymore, so I can't blame my physique on travel. It's time to work out. In the South, we are known for fried chicken lovers. That's uh, us. Here, chicken. Ah! <laughs> okay, now this is personal. I've heard that this is the place to have livers. Livers and gizzards. We're going to do the gizzards too, but I don't know how many. <laughs> Saturday morning at 1030 on KRWG Public Media. Welcome back. Let's take a look at temperatures around the state. Farmington at 41 degrees as well as Santa Fe, 51 in Albuquerque, 45 in Clovis, and then 64 for both Deming and Las Cruces. For tomorrow, they're expecting a high of 50 degrees in Farmington, Clovis at 46, Fort Riodoso 41, and then Deming and Las Cruces 60 degrees. Now let's take a look at temperatures around our area in Alamogordo. Tonight they're expecting an overnight low of 49 degrees with partly cloudy skies. Tomorrow partly cloudy skies as well with a high of 59 degrees. In truth or consequences, tonight they're expecting an overnight low of 51 degrees and tomorrow a high of 57 with cl mostly clear skies. Silver City tonight they're expecting an overnight low of 42 and tomorrow clear skies with 54 degrees. And finally, in the City of the Crosses, tonight we're expecting an overnight low of 52 degrees and tomorrow a warm 60 degrees. That's all the weather I have for right now. Stick around. I'll be back with your five-day forecast. A dad in Houston is facing charges after a horrific accident. Here's Kelly Garcia Moreno with today's Southwest Minute. An eight-year-old boy in Houston, Texas, is dead. His five-year-old brother was critically injured after their dad crashed into two tow trucks. The dad was also critically injured. Neither child was wearing a seatbelt. Authorities believe the boys had just been picked up from school and the father was drunk. Firefighters in Weld County, Colorado, are battling a large diesel fire at the Noble Energy Facility. The fire started on Wednesday and about 3,000 gallons of diesel was burning. There are thousands of gallons still at the business. Smoke from the fire could be seen four miles. Nearby residents were told to evacuate. It has not yet been confirmed exactly how the fire started. 
and Nevada will no longer add a sales tax on feminine hygiene products. Nevada is the 10th state to eliminate the so-called pink tax. After Tuesday's vote, 57% of voters approved the change. It takes effect on January 1st. I'm Kelly Garcia Moreno with today's Southwest Minute. And the Battle of I-10 is coming to the Pan Am. It is, and Kristen is next with sports. Thanks, Amanda and Diana. Coming up in sports, find out which Las Cruces high schools made it to the state football tournament. We'll be right back with News 22 Sports. As we bring Raymond Harry to his final resting place here on earth, we pray that your blessings and your peace will be upon all those who rest here. Sunday at 2 p.m. on KRWG Public Media. I'm Rick Steves. Join me in Italy for Siena and Tuscany's wine country, where we'll enjoy an aperitivo on the Great Square, marvel at exquisite art, eat cheese in an Etruscan cellar, settle into a farmhouse B&B, learn to make peachy pasta, taste one of the world's finest wines, prepare for a festival, and then go to the races. Saturday at 8 p.m. on KRWG Public Media. This is KRWG TV News 22 Sports. Welcome back. It's time to kick it with Kristen. The New Mexico State men's basketball team is preparing to host the Battle of I-10. This Friday at 7 p.m., the Aggies will take on the Miners at the Pan American Center. New Mexico State is 113 and 101 all time against UTEP and 59 and 42 at home. NMSU has won the last seven games they've played against UTEP and Aggie fans are confident that NMSU will get another win. I think we're going to beat them. I went to uh, the game earlier in the week and we won by like 20 points so I think we'll do good. Uh, after seeing them play this past week against North Dakota and watching their record from last year I'm pretty sure that it'll be a success for them and they'll beat them. The NMSU volleyball team is facing off against Grand Canyon University as we speak. This is the final road game for NMSU during the regular season. The Aggies will be back at the Pan American Center on Saturday at 11 a.m. to take on California Baptist. The Aggies are currently ranked third in the WAC, while GCU is ranked seventh and California Baptist is ranked fourth. The 2018 NMAA State Football Championships are about to be underway here in New Mexico. Three of the four Las Cruces High School football teams made it to the playoffs this season. Centennial High School received the number three seed for the tournament, which gave them a bye for the first round. The Hawks will face off against either El Dorado or Hobbs in the quarterfinals. The Mayfield Trojans received the number five seed and will take on Cibola High School on Friday at 7 p.m. at the Field of Dreams for the first round. And the Las Cruces Bulldogs received the number seven seed and will face off against Clovis on Saturday at 1 p.m. at the Field of Dreams also for the first round. The Centennial girls soccer team is undefeated no more. The Lady Hawks lost in the quarterfinals to the number eight seed La Cueva. The La Cueva Bears have advanced to the championship game, which will take place tomorrow at 3 p.m. They will face off against Sandia, the number two seed. The boys state championship game will be tomorrow at 6 p.m. and will be between the number six seed Mayfield High School and number one seed Cleveland. The U.S. women's soccer team is celebrating their 500th win. The U.S. national women's team got their very first victory on August 18th in 1985 over Italy, and today they received their 500th win over Portugal. They won today's friendly 1-0 with Jessica McDonald scoring her first international goal in the 42nd minute during her first start for the national team. And that's all for sports tonight. Join us for more sports action next week. Still ahead on News 22, Alyssa will be back to take a look at your five-day forecast. But first, we look back at the life of the Queen of Soul. More on that when News 22 continues. on Austin City Limits. You
Saturday at 9 p.m. on KRWG Public Media. Delete. Ignore. There are tens of thousands of people who are doing this work. I've seen hundreds of beheadings. Should be really quite disturbing to democratic societies. The Cleaners. Monday at 9 p.m. on KRWG Public Media. On Native America, from ancient North American mounds aligned to the moon. Cahokia would have been inhabited with thousands of people all coming here to live in this one large city. To the sun pyramids of Central and South America. Ceremonies would have been quite spectacular. Native Americans connected human life to the cosmos. People believed that they had achieved a kind of replica of what the gods wanted on Earth. Tuesday at 8 p.m. on KRWG Public Media. Let's take a look at our top stories. The Catholic Diocese of Las Cruces has a list of 28 priests who have been accused of sexually assaulting minors dating as far back as 1950. Although it seemed that Harrell won the race for Congress, after final count, Xochitl Torres Small is the winner. And NMSU men's basketball will be taking on the minors tomorrow in the Battle of I-10. A documentary featuring performances by the late Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin, is finally being released after nearly half a century. The film titled Amazing Grace will debut Monday at the, NY at the Doc NYC Festival in New York. Franklin passed away in August at the age of 76 from pancreatic cancer. The documentary shows her gospel performances over two days at the New Temple Missionary Baptist Church in Los Angeles in 1972. I'll definitely be watching oh, that. Nice. That sounds really exciting. exciting. So, Lisa, what are the next five days looking like? So, it's actually looking really nice around here. So, mostly sunny throughout the week. Uh, the temperatures in the 60s. Sun Sunday, it's going to be 70 degrees, so a little bit warmer. But throughout the rest of the week, it's going to be a really nice day. Uh, 58 on Saturday, 55 on Monday. So, just be prepared to stay outdoors because that's what I would do. <laughs> Sounds good, sounds good. And don't forget, you can catch all of today's aired stories and past newscasts on our YouTube page at youtube.com forward slash KRWG News 22. And follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat for show updates and the latest on what the News 22 team is up to. And that's all for News 22 Thursday. Thank you, for jo everyone, for joining us tonight. Tune in next week for more news from across the Southwest. I'm Amanda Adame. I'm Diana Castillo. And I'm Melissa Tays. Good night. Good night. This news brief in Espanol is brought to you by Noticias 22, Spanish language news for Southern New Mexico and West Texas. Noticias 22. Hola a todos, los saluda con mucho gusto Coral Godoy en este breve informativo de Noticias 22. Ayer por la noche, de ser una noche de diversión, pasó de ser una noche de tragedia. 12 personas están muertas en el sur de California, después de que un hombre abrió fuego en un bar durante una noche de colegio sin razón aparente. Los investigadores informaron que después del incidente, el hombre apareció muerto en la cena, pero aún, no se, pero aún se desconoce el motivo de su muerte. También les informó que el pasado 6 de noviembre se anunció que Xochitl Torres Esmó ganó la elección contra Yvette Harrell por tan solo 2,728 votos. La elección quedó de la siguiente forma. Torres ganó el segundo distrito de representantes con más de 50% votos y Harold perdió por poco más de 49% de votos. En otras noticias, Las Cruces Alto de Crimen ofrece recompensa a mil dólares a quien ayude a encontrar a las dos personas que robaron un en apartamento en la Española Street este pasado 24 de noviembre. Los investigadores capturaron una imagen de un minivan color dorado de una de las cámaras de seguridad. Cualquier persona que tenga información y puede identificar a las dos personas y el vehículo, favor de llamar a las cruces, alto al crimen, al número que aparece en su pantalla. Esto fue todo por hoy. Sigan nuestras redes sociales, Instagram y Facebook. Muchas gracias por sintonizarnos. Para ustedes, Noticias 22, Coral Godoy.